All right, so once you have 4E there, go back to where you wrote this. And if you, are, if you haven't already, put a big box around it, okay? We're going to use this one derivative to get all the rest that we need with some of that stuff we remembered from earlier today. So, cos x, we're going to get this derivative. Can anyone remind me, what is cos x called cos x? It's an abbreviation for something. What's an abbreviation for? Cosine. Cosine? What's the co? That's the co is also an abbreviation. What's that an abbreviation of? Complementary, right? This is the complement of sine. Okay. Now I want you to remember. I'll do it in um, I'll do it in degrees because I know it's easier for our brains to handle for now. If I had sine twenty degrees, right? If you had your calculator there, you could say that's exactly the same as cos of the complement of that, which in this case would be twenty degrees and what adds up to ninety? 70. Twenty and seventy, right? So you could verify this on your calculator as long as your calculator is in the correct mode. Um, and you can do this for any number. Sine of uh, you know, 35 is going to be cos of uh, 55, right? You can do this for anything. Okay? Now we can take this into trigonometry land up here in radians by saying that cos of something is sine of its complement. Now this is really tricky. In degrees, we would say you got 70 by saying 90 degrees take away whatever your other angle was. In this case, it was 20, right? Now, we're not in degrees. We're trying to do everything in radians, right? So how do I say this but in radians? I won't say 90 degrees for starters. I'll say, what's the equivalent? Think, think, what's the equivalent? It's pi on 2, thank you. And then in this case, when I'm subtracting, I don't have like some 20 degrees or 35 degrees. I have any angle you like. So therefore, I'm just going to say, x, like whatever angle that is. Okay. Now this looks like it's made our task harder, but it's actually made it easier. I want you to look carefully again at 1b in the review questions we did. Can you look back? Turn back a page if you need to. We did it just at the start of this lesson. What skill, what knowledge did we pull on to differentiate that function to the power of 7? What did we do? We used chain rule, right? Because you're like, I don't want to raise this to the power of 7 expand. And this is exactly the situation we have here. I can use chain rule to make mincemeat of this, right? There's an outside function and there's an inside function. What is the outside function? Uh, it's sine, right? There it is, right there. That's on the outside, literally on the outside. What's the inside function? Pi on 2 minus x. This here. So let's do it one step at a time. We just worked out what the derivative of the outside function is. So sine is going to turn into cos, right? This thing stays the same, just like it always does with the inside function. Oh, Way to go, you've done the outside. What's the derivative of this inside function? Think carefully. Pi. Now, this pi on, two, this pi on 2 is just like the negative 4 in that original function, right? Does it change our, our slope? No, it just changes where you are, right? This is the part that matters. And the coefficient is negative 1. So I'm going to multiply this whole thing by negative 1. Times two to the negative one. Wouldn't pi on two equal say that again? Pi on two yep. equal to pi times two to the negative one. Yeah, if you wanted to, you could write that angle there. Way. Yeah, it's kind of like even though I can write it as pi times two to the negative one, it doesn't actually help me. In fact I can just ignore it because it's a constant. Now we're almost done here, right? This thing here, this pi on two minus x, we introduced it so we could turn things in terms of something I know about, right? But we can use that same fact about cosine. The complement. What's the complement of this? Pi on 2 minus that. What would that be? Pi on 2 minus pi on 2 minus x. That's the complement of the complement. What would that be? Come on, help me out. Expand some brackets for me. What happens with that minus at the front? It would just be bx, right? Why? Because minus pi on 2, that's going to become 0. And then what happens here? It's, uh, it makes it You're a double negative, right? Plus x. Of course, the complement of 20 is 70. And the complement of 70 takes you back to 20, right? So therefore, I can take this and I can convert it back into sine. That's where I came back from, right? So this is just sine x. And that minus 1, I'm going to put it By. Okay, go pull it open and instead of graphing sine x, graph, whoop, wrong color. graph 
cause. Now, if you want, and um, the colors here will help you, graph cause on top of the same graph, do minus sine x, and tell me what it looks like. You okay to go? Yeah. Okay, go. Thank you. Did you get them? Have you got it? Okay. Yeah, what, what's going on? Well, cos x, right? We had it just now. Cos x looks like this. You've already got it, but I'm just going to check it out. Like so. What's the gradient start off at for this guy? Right there at the top. What's the gradient? The gradient. It's zero, right? Because you've got that horizontal tangent we were talking about before. As soon as you start going, is it decreasing or increasing? Decreasing. It's decreasing, which is why the gradient should be negative. That's why it's minus sine x, not regular sine x. Does that make sense? And then, of course, down here, you've got another station for you, Sean. Are you talking about something? I just didn't want to write it so messy. <laughs> That's the basic reason. This is just simpler than that. Do you agree? Like writing it without this kind of minus fluff, right? It's the same thing, they are equivalent, but this is just easier to write. Okay. So if you put a box around this, I'd love you also to put a box around this. The derivative of sine is cos, but the derivative of cos is minus sine. This is a source of frustration for calculus students all around the world because it's so easy to mess up. But this is why I emphasize the importance of thinking really hard because memory is the residue of thought. If you think carefully about this, you will get it in some time. <sighs> one last one, and then you can. Uh, we did sine. We did cos. We need tan, right? Now, are you looking back at the review questions and are you suspicious now? Because I gave you three... I gave you three differentiation examples, right? A simple one? I gave you the chain rule. Why do you think I gave you the chain rule? Because, um... Cause of, cause of this, right? We just used the chain rule. And then the one C, what was the third one I gave you? You had to use the? Quotient. Because what's tan x? Isn't it? Tan x is a fraction, right? It's sine, sine over cos. So I am going to stop right here. Wow. And I'm going to see if you can disentangle this guy right here. See what you get.